So I'm out in Westerpark, just there's this tree that it's not my tree, but I get a little bit grumpy if somebody is sitting there because it, it has, um, there's this sort of groove in that tree and it makes this perfect seat. So sometimes I go there actually quite often in the summer when it's warm and dry. Then I go there and I'm writing away and doing stuff. And so once I was there and two groups of high school kids came, a group of boys and a group of girls. And they weren't together, but I believe they came from the same school. And I have no idea what school that was, that is or was, because around there, there are not many high schools. Anyway, they're in the park. So you have the guys at one side and there's about five or six meters between the two. And of course they make a lot of noise, which means I stop writing and I'm watching. And I noticed some funny things, which nothing was unfamiliar, but I just noticed it again. And so it was, they were of this age where they're beginning to notice one another in a different way. So boys are no longer irritating and girls are no longer annoying, but you can actually like one another. And, but they're not yet sort of cool enough to have a sensible conversation. So what happens is you'd have this sort of noise <laughs> from the guys and you'd have also some noise from the ladies and it would just be going and then I noticed there was one guy he was the sort of top dog he was the I don't know he made the most noise and if he said something most of the other guys would laugh uh, with the ladies uh, I didn't notice anyone in particular it's just that it was very clear that both groups were completely aware of each other but they weren't officially saying anything then in the group of boys there was one kid and Often you see that there's a group, it's very dynamic, and then there's one person who is with them, and you're never quite sure why that person is with them, because they don't seem to, they have a different energy to the main group. And this kid, he was, you, he looked nerdy, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't, but he was sort of a bit off to one side, and he didn't make much noise, he was just there. And so you have, of course, the guys make noise, the ladies make noise, and it goes on. And then I notice the quiet kid kept looking at he, there's a way there's a way I recognize that look he's looking as somebody who has caught his attention with the ladies and then I notice who it is and then I notice that the top guy the noisiest guy of <laughs> the boys is trying to get attention of the lady who the nerdy guy is looking at and she's looking at the nerdy guy. She's not looking at this guy. So this guy's making all this noise and he begins to make sort of just more noise and do sort of run a bit, jump a bit. And I thought, you know, this is, we're just monkeys, you know, we're just apes. Because it was so obvious what he's trying to do. You know, he, he could have, he might as well have beaten his chest and jumped up and down. But it didn't work because whatever it was, the vibe of the nerdy guy was seemed to fit or the frequency of the nerdy guy and the, the, the lady, he, the noisy guy was trying to connect with. It seemed that they had their own frequency. So I don't know what the end of the story was because eventually they went off and um, they didn't go off together. But I'd like to think that the nerdy guy did connect. And then you've got the uh, <laughs> the noisy guy wondering, yeah, but how is this possible? I made all the noise. I was jumping. I was this. I was that. Who knows? But that's just one of those uh, good ones. Yeah, that was a nice one.